Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the concept of latent heat. And we've looked before at the heat involved and the energies involved in raising and lowering temperatures. Latent heat comes in when we look at phase changes because it takes also takes heat and different uh, amounts to be able to change the phase of a substance. So there can be latent heat involved in changing a substance from a liquid to a gas or from a solid to a liquid or vice versa in any of those cases. So let's go ahead and look at this and get started with the concepts we want to cover. And what we want to look at first of all is what about the heat? We talked about how it can involve a temperature change but not all heat transfers involve a temperature change. They can also involve a phase change. So for example ice melting to form liquid water also takes energy. So it takes energy for that ice to melt. And that is required. What, what is required? Well, it's the, needed to break apart the bonds of between the molecules. So when you have ice, everything is bound together in a solid. And in order to break those bonds, you need to melt the material and that takes energy to turn it into a liquid. You can also do the same thing with the liquid that it takes energy to have a liquid here and to turn it into a gas where things are spread out even more. And of course you can also work the other direction because while it takes energy to do that you can release energy by condensing a liquid into a solid by freezing ice. So the energies needed given by Q here are going to be equal to the mass of the material times in this case the latent heat of freezing so L sub F it applies for melting or freezing in other words going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid. If we are looking at vaporization or condensation it is M times L with a subscript V in this case for latent heat of vaporization. And it applies to the same way. It's the same thing depending on which way you're going. But the values are going to be the same. It's the same amount of energy to uh, convert a substance from a liquid to a gas as to go from a gas to a liquid. Now how do we get these values? Well they are experimentally determined and for this class you can use table 14.2 in the textbook to find the values if you are asked for them in a problem. So let's look at a little bit more of this here and what we want to see what do we mean by the latent heat and what are the units for it. Well its units are joules per kilogram. So how much energy does it take to change the state of one kilogram of that substance. So we can look at our material here what's happening and what we have is that here's the temperatures in this diagram. It shows the amount of energy and the temperature. So if you start off with ice at a very cold temperature it is pure ice. And as you raise the temperature as you as you add heat add energy it heats up. So the ice gets warmer but it is not yet melting. It does not melt until you reach the temperature of zero degrees. At that point, the, we undergo a phase change. So it takes a certain amount of energy to convert all of that ice to water. But while it does, the temperature remains at zero degrees until you have then converted all of the ice into water. And now you have just water. And if you're continuing to apply energy, that water will warm up until it reaches a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Remember that's the boiling point of water at which point you will have a mixture of water and steam and the that will remain again at 100 degrees until you have converted all the water to steam and if you continue to add energy then the steam will continue to have a higher temperature. But there are these points when you look have to look at this individually. So if you were looking at a problem that involved taking ice into water you want to look at how much it took to warm the ice first to zero degrees then how much it took to convert the ice into water and then how much energy it took to heat that water up to some temperature. So you might need to split this apart into three parts of a problem and do three calculations add those energies up to get a total. So when we look and phase changes are involved we have to do the problem in parts. 
Now the latent heat coefficients that we mentioned, why do we call them latent? Well, we're not seeing a temperature change. So really, it's kind of invisible. All we're seeing is the phase change. So the ice melting while temperature does not change at all. Now let's look at one example problem of this to work through. So we're going to take three ice cubes uh, to chill soda at 20 degrees Celsius. And the mass of the soda is 0.25 kilograms. The ice starts out at zero degrees Celsius. The ice cubes each have a mass of six grams. We can ignore heat loss and assume the heat capacity of soda and water are the same. So we want to find what is the final temperature after the ice has fully melted. So again, we're going to start off with what we know. So what do we know in this problem? We, we know the temperature. The soda is at 20 degrees Celsius. The mass was 0.25 kilograms. The ice temperature was 0 degrees Celsius. And the mass of the ice is 0 0.018 kilograms. Make sure you're converting. This was given as 6 grams per ice cube, which equals 18 grams for the three ice cubes. But we need to convert that into kilograms to get it into SI units to calculate. So always watch what units you're given. Sometimes there is a conversion involved that you need to do before you can continue on with the problem. So, so we know that the amount of energy that goes from the ice is the same as the energy added to the soda. So they are, they are the same, just opposite in sign. So that gives us a starting point. So let's go ahead and look at each of these individually. And what we see is that we can find that Q for the ice, the energy, the heat of the ice is equal to the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion, what it takes to melt that ice into a liquid, into liquid water multiplied by the temperature that it takes to raise that ice from zero degrees to the final temperature, which is what we are looking for. And what we see is that we want to find the temperature for the increase for the soda. Now the soda, you note, does not have a latent heat of fusion because it is not changing state. So the soda stays as a liquid. So it's just this part of the equation for the soda because you have the mass times the specific heat times the temperature change. How much has it changed from that 20 degrees Celsius? And then we can resolve. And this is something I challenge you to look at yourself. I've done all the work here, but I haven't shown all the steps as to how you'd put these two together. So you take that the ice and the soda, we know those values. We can set them equal to each other and then we can solve for the final temperature. And if you do that, you should end up with something like this. So remember, we're having to look at multiple steps here. We're looking at the step that it takes to do this portion, the step for this portion and the parts for the soda. We're looking at several different things that we have to put together. So we put all of those together and then what do we find? Well, we can put all of our numbers that we know in there and go ahead and calculate that. And what we find is that the temperature, the final temperature of the ice and the soda, once the ice is melted, will now be 13 degrees Celsius. So the temperature has decreased. Melting the ice has decreased the temperature of the soda from 20 degrees Celsius to 13 degrees Celsius. So we can go ahead. But again, when you're looking at these, you have to look at all of the separate parts because of the way everything has to be put together. So that occurs in stages and we have to look at those and they require different amounts of heat to melt the ice as to raise the temperature of the ice to whatever that final temperature is. So let's go ahead and finish up a couple things here. We want to look at the concept of sublimation. I've mentioned this in previous lectures. It is a direct transition from a solid to a gas. And a common thing that we're used to here on Earth with that is dry ice, which is carbon dioxide, CO2, which does go directly from a solid to a gas. So it can be used to cool things, but it doesn't give off, have any liquid form that exists.
In this case, there will be a latent heat of sublimation, which co corresponds to the phase change from a solid directly to a gas. Remember, we had vaporization, which would take a liquid to a gas, and we had latent heat of fusion, which could take a solid into a liquid. Well, this is the very same thing, looking at the mass of the material times that latent heat of sublimation, which requires energy. And that is why since it takes energy, it cools things off. And that's what makes dry ice such an effective coolant. Alrighty, and then we have looking at our problem solving strategies for heat. So we want to look at the situation. Is it just a change in temperature? Or do we have to consider the latent heat? That can be important. Is there heat transfer in or out of the system? Are we heating or cooling things? So we have to look at those things. What changes temperature? In our previous example we did here, the, both the water and the soda change temperature. The phase change was only for the water, the ice melting. Identify your given quantities and find out what you're looking for. And then solve the equation for the quantity that you are trying to determine. Substitute your values in, make sure you get a good answer, and check again. Always check and make sure your answer is reasonable. The problems that I give you will give you a reasonable answer. So if you're going to end up with your final temperature, for example, when we looked at how, what, was, what would happen to that soda after the ice melted, we would expect that the temperature would decrease. If the temperature had increased, it gives you a sign that maybe you want to go back and look at something in a little more detail. So let's go ahead and finish up here as we do with our summary. And what we have is that heat transfer results in an increase in temperature or a phase change. It can do either one of these two or both, depending on how much heat is transferred. But when we look at them, we look at them in stages. So we might look, if we have ice melting, we might look at the phase change to liquid and then increasing the temperature of that liquid water afterwards. The latent heat is what tells you the amount of energy needed for the phase change. So remember, we looked previously at how to uh, figure out the energy for a temperature increase. This time we're looking for a phase change. And sublimation is the direct change from solid to gas without passing through the liquid phase. That's common with carbon dioxide here on Earth. However, in other areas such as Mars, water will actually have no liquid phase and will actually sublimate as well and could go directly from a solid to a gaseous phase. Remember that depends on the specific temperatures and pressures. So on Earth you can have liquid water because of a suffi sufficient atmospheric pressure. On Mars you could not. So that concludes this lecture on latent heat. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then have a great day everyone. And I will see you in class.